champion of God's truth, a man whose life was an accusing finger pointing at sham, hypocrisy and false religion. Choose, decide, choose, decide. No standing on the sidelines for this man of God. Why, he has the very temper of divinity in his blood. He has the courage of a mountain lion. His voice is the voice of a thousand protests against falsehoods. His eyes blaze out like a cutting ray of light. This story is epic. It is God's story. It is Elijah's courage. It goes on now and intensifies. Then Elijah called upon the priests of Baal to call upon the name of their God, as he would call upon the name of his God when the time came. And the God who answers with fire, he is God! You call your God, I'll call mine. And I hope you'll understand, understand That when you see the flame come down, flame come down Then the true God is at hand Call him down To save his face and yours You need a pretty powerful friend When you try to break God's laws prophets of Baal begin their ritual dancing and limping and working themselves up into a fury. Again and again they call upon the name of their God, asking him to answer them with fire from heaven. To urge them on, musical instruments played a haunting tune.
nothing happened. Nothing. There was no movement on Baal's altar except the buzzing of flies. Cry louder, your God cannot hear your mumbling, your mumbling, your mumbling. <laughs> Cry louder, your God must be meditating, meditating, meditating. <laughs> Cry louder, your God must be having his nap, his nap. His nap. Cry louder, your God must be on a journey, a journey, a journey. Salter remained unlighted. He's not there, or so it seems. So it seems. I'm sorry for you, friend. For you, friend. But thank him when you see him next. For the fire he didn't send. A fix the prophets of Baal were in. The payoff for the prophets of Baal was to come. A big payoff, too, because their lies were big as well. You see, to these dark minded people, the world was a wild, chaotic thing, a jungle of conflicting powers, male against female, life against death. There was a god of planting and one of harvest. There was a spirit who put fish in fishermen's nets and a god specializing in the care of women at childbirth. At best, an uneasy truce existed between them. And then, 
along comes this fool, Elijah, and says that all these processes are one process and come from a single source. What he shouted echoes down all time. This belief in one God slew a host of horrors, malign storm devils, evils of sickness, blighters of the harvest, unholy tyrants over life and death. This is what the scripture says, introducing the next chapter of the drama. Then Elijah said to all the people, Come near to me. And all the people came near to him. He repaired the altar. Elijah took twelve stones, and with the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord. And he put wood in order. He cut the bull in pieces and laid it on the wood. He said, Fill four jars with water and pour it on the burnt offering and on the wood. Friends, they did this three times. Three times, mind you. Then Elijah prayed to his God, O Lord God of Abraham, Isaac and Israel, let it be known this day that thou art the God of Israel and that I am thy servant and that I have done all these things that at thy word. Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, let it be known that you are God, and that I Answer me, O Lord, answer me, 
that this people may know that thou, O Lord, art God, and that thou hast not turned their hearts back. Then fell the fire of the Lord. It hit the altar with atomic force and burnt the bull, the stones, the twigs and the grass to cinders. Take the prophets of Baal and destroy them.